Hello. So I did a video last week on uh, the basic rules for Company of Heroes. Uh, I mentioned I would probably go over the advanced rules in uh, my next video, so that's what I'm going to do for this week. Um, if you did not watch the basic rules video, go back and watch uh, that. I'll probably put a link here to that video, or you can go watch somebody else's video on the basic rules but this video is only going to go over the changes what's different in the advanced rules um, from the basic rules alright so I had just finished uh, playing a, uh, my second game of Company of Heroes this time using the advanced rules and uh, you know it wasn't much more difficult I think I remembered most of the uh, advanced rules <laughs> So, uh, anyway, I'm just going to go over what uh, those changes are, and uh, then maybe we'll do a couple of examples using the advanced rules. So, the first difference to mention is the weapons teams. The mortar team, like on this, uh, the Americans here, mortar team, machine gun team, anti-tank gun team, you'll see they have this little no-fire icon. So when a weapon team spawns it spawns with a no fire uh, status dice like so in its tray and that means it is not unpacked and not ready to fire so you can still spend CP on a weapons team just like as always if you wanted to move this mortar um, team you know you'd spend one to move it here one to move it here but then you could either spend a uh, sorry I'm trying to get this in here Ugh. then you could spend a, another CP to move it one more um, but then it would still be packed up and would be unable to fire it cost one CP to unpack a weapon team, in this case this mortar team, and then you just flip the no fire icon over to the um, checked side. Ah, this is annoying. There. <laughs> now that means that that weapon team is unpacked and is able to fire. Before this weapon team is able to move again, like um, in another round, you know, it couldn't move again in this round because you've spent three CP on it. But in a future round, before this weapon team is able to move again, you would have to spend one CP to uh, pack it up, and then you know you'd flip the dice over to the no fire, and then you could spend CP to move it. But again, they would be unable to fire as long as they are um, packed up. Now for a machine gun team, um, such as this uh, German MG42 team, you know, again, I said uh, mortar team, machine gun team, anti-tank gun team, they're, they're the same. They're, they're packed up um, when they spawn, and then you, um, you can spend a CP to unpack them. But a anti-tank team and a machine gun team have one other step. When you spend a CP to unpack them, you have to choose a facing and that facing will determine their firing arc so the anti-tank gun team and the machine gun team uh, when they're unpacked or deployed is actually what the rules call it um, pack you pack them and then you deploy them um, so when you deploy a anti-tank gun team or machine gun team you have to choose a facing and then their firing arc is goes from the three forward hexes in front of them and then out to their range so uh, in this case with if this machine gun team was facing this way it would be these three forward hexes and then uh, the hexes out from that because they have a range of two so they wouldn't be able to fire at anything you know out in this area behind them until they could spend during the maneuver phase they could spend one CP to pack move 
and then spend another CP to deploy um, and then they would their firing arc would be in this direction for the mortar team as far as I could see in the rules they, there's no firing arc so once they are deployed they can fire you know in any direction within their range as far as movement um, in the advanced rules the only change uh, seems to be with heavy vehicles which um, you know have the red uh, heart symbol like uh, the Sherman tank here which I have an example here so heavy vehicles move a little bit differently in the basic rules they just move like anybody else you know you spend one CP move it one CP move it um, again in the advanced rules that's a bit different heavy vehicles such as the Sherman have a facing so they're always facing forward so for one CP you can move forward or you can move backwards but your facing would be the same but you can also move one hex tick when you when you uh, spend a CP to move so if you were going to spend a CP to move this Sherman, you can move at uh, one hex tick um, left or right, um, either before or after you move. So if you were going to move here, um, you know, you could move this way and then turn one hex tick that way or turn one hex tick that way. Then you'd be set to move in whichever direction for your next CP. So then say I wanted to spend another CP to move this way. And uh, my last CP, I wanted to move here and then turn like that. So you can spend one CP uh, to move and turn one hex tick or just go straight or, or backwards. You could, of course, you know, in another example, you could, uh, you wanted to move here. You can move here and then turn a hex tick like so. So anyway. That's uh, the difference for heavy vehicles. And you could also just spend one CP just to move one hex tick without moving forward or backwards. Um, just thought I would mention that. The other difference uh, with heavy vehicles, you know, for instance, the Sherman, which we're using in our example here. Um, in the basic rules, they can do two attacks, two armor piercing, and one uh, anti-infantry, and they could do it in any direction. Well, in the advanced rules, you can see by this arrow here, that means a turreted uh, attack. So that attack could still be any direction. The two armor piercing attack could still be any direction because the Sherman's turret you know can turn so that that's kind of unchanged however the uh, one anti-infantry attack would be in the forward firing arc of the the heavy vehicle so similar to the machine gun uh, you know it's the three forward hexes in front of you and then going out from there up to the range of the vehicle uh, for the instance of the Sherman's a range of two, so again it would just be there. So, and they can be separate attack. In the basic rules, you had to attack the same target with both the armor piercing attack and the anti infantry. Um, in the advanced rules, you could attack um, one target with this anti infantry, I mean, with the uh, turreted. Uh, armor piercing and then you could attack a different target um, within your forward firing arc with that anti infantry or you could take you know if they're both within your forward firing arc you could attack them both uh, with the same attack some heavy vehicles such as this Sturm Panzer have the slow uh, icon here if your vehicle has the slow icon, you 
don't get to turn the one hex tick for free so you know with the uh, the Sherman we showed they could uh, spend one CP move forward and then turn a hex tick uh, for free um, when you have the a vehicle with the slow icon like the Sturm Panzer you could move forward one but then you would have to spend another CP to turn so you don't get the free one hex tick turn um, with a slow vehicle there may be some vehicles or effects that cause double slow <clears throat> so if a uh, if, if an effect causes a unit or the unit itself only has double slow you can only spend one CP per round on that unit instead of three CP uh, as you can with uh, most units now let's talk about the changes to pinning in the advanced rules. You remember in the basic rules at the beginning of the damage phase a machine gun unit such as this one could choose one uh, green or infantry unit type in its um, sight and range and they could pin them and then that unit couldn't um, capture a control point or fire or uh, move or anything until the end of the round and then at the end of the round that pin um, status was removed so in the advanced rules if a machine gun team is um, deployed they can pin all units um, all infantry units that are within their firing arc now if a uh, you know say we had this case where this machine gun team is deployed there so their forward firing arc includes here and here <clears throat> so it you know if in this example this uh, US infantry squad spent a CP and moved into the firing arc of that uh, machine gun squad they would be immediately pinned and they would not be able to move any further they wouldn't be able to act that or attack they wouldn't be able to capture a control point um, they can still spot for other units um, you know giving them line of sight and they can still roll defense dice but if they move into the firing arc of a deployed machine gun team they're immediately pinned now a difference is if this infantry squad was here and this machine gun, uh, German machine gun MG42 team was here, and they, uh, you know, they were not deployed. They spend a CP to move in, spend another CP to deploy. Then this um, U.S. Um, rifle team is not immediately pinned even though they're now within range in the firing arc because they they didn't move into the firing arc um, of the MG team when they were set up and deployed um, the MG team set up and deployed um, and they were already in the firing arc they are not immediately pinned However, if they don't move out of that machine gun squad's uh, firing arc, by the time you get to the damage phase, at the end of the maneuver phase, then they would be immediately pinned. And unlike the, um, base, the basic rules where the pin status goes away at the end of the round, the only way to remove the pin status of um, that infantry squad here is if the uh, machine gun team either packs up, you know, uh, unpacks, or if they are destroyed or, you know, move out of range. As long as they stay deployed um, and, are, and are not destroyed, then that team is remains pinned and can't move. The only way they can move is to retreat and that is also a new uh, option in the advanced rules so let's talk about how retreat works so a unit can retreat at any time during the maneuver phase even if uh, 
you know they've spent three CP so even if this uh, unit here had spent its third CP to move into the spot and got pinned by this machine gun team they weren't paying attention oh I'm pinned well even if they've spent three CP as long as it's still on their turn in the maneuver phase they can retreat and to retreat you take a status die put the retreat flag and then you immediately move three spaces toward the retreat point. So one, two, three. And that's the only action that a retreating unit can do um, until they actually reach the retreat point. So, you know, they moved three back, that would be it. Um, they can still be fired upon, they can't be pinned but they can still be fired upon, but they cannot fire, they cannot uh, spot, they can't attack, and they have to take the shortest route back to their retreat point. So if that unit moved three, um, that's all they can move then. At the next maneuver phase, the only thing that unit can do is again, retreat another three spaces to get to the retreat point. Now. Uh, on this map, the Trois Pont map, you know that the retreat point is the same as the reinforcement point. You know it's one B here on this side, and uh, two B here over on this side. You can also, if you have a, a major spawn, um, the Americans have this uh, major unit that they can spawn and it becomes a retreat point and reinforcement point. So, you know, if you had the major spawned, instead of moving to this point, you could retreat to where the major is. But in either case, once you uh, finally reach the retreat point in the following supply phase, you can remove the retreat status, and if your unit was, you know, damaged, you could immediately reinforce um, one unit one point of damage I think I mentioned when your units retreating you know you can't fire you can't spend CP uh, you can't spot um, you can use cover and that's one uh, other new rule we haven't talked about in the advanced rules in the basic rules we, we did talk about how the buildings or the you know solid green lines provide um, cover and give you two defense dice to roll when a unit you know in a building is being attacked um, you'll see on the map there are these uh, thick yellow lines well those also provide cover for infantry um, for green units but instead of two um, defense dice if you're behind uh, one of the yellow lines you get one defense dice of um, to roll when you're attacked but of course the attack has to come across the yellow line so if you know if this unit was here but was being attacked from here that attack is not coming across the yellow defense or uh, light cover line so it wouldn't get the benefit of cover um, but if the attack was coming across from here then they would get the benefit and cover does not stack with other with other cover so we'll talk about here in a minute sandbags um, if you had sandbags in here that cover would not stack with this light cover you get here but anyway if uh, you're if you're behind a yellow line that the attack is coming across um, you get one defense die for that you're in light cover Another change in the advanced rules is HE damage. So you know, if you remember from the basic rules, like this mortar team it does HD HE damage. So it would apply one each if it was say it was attacking this uh, Ostwind flak Panzer here. Um, they would place one HE damage die next to the target, and then that target would consult the defense table. You know, that's a, the Ostwind's a heavy vehicle, so it would consult the defense table and it would have resistance um, to the uh, HE damage, so it would get to, you know, roll the HE damage um, 
for defense. Well, HE damage in the um, advanced rules before you have to determine if the HE um, attack actually hits. So you'll take your HE damage that you apply and roll it. And if you got a red like that, <laughs> then that would actually be zero damage. So that, that means that HE attack. So if this mortar team was attacking and they rolled that, that means they missed. Their mortar went off target and they hit something else. If you get a black result, um, you know, the tank or the infantry, then you do one damage or you're going to attempt to apply one damage. And if you get a green result, then that's two damage. So it's a crit. And then the target would still get to roll defense dice um, as usual. But, you know, you may have done two damage, uh, two possible damage with that attack instead of one, or you may do none. Now, in the rules that, uh, you know, came with the game, it says if you end up get you know roll for damage and you end up getting a green and you do two damage that the uh, if the target um does have a, res a resistance to he damage and they get to roll resistance that they would only get to roll one defense dice even though you did two um damage because you got a crit but uh i think i read um that that rule has changed now. Somebody may correct me if I'm wrong, but you would still go ahead and get to roll two defense dice um, against a, a crit. Another change um, <clears throat> on the defense rolls. You know, in the base in the basic game, if a heavy vehicle takes um, armor piercing damage it's not resistant to it it's got this gray shield so that means it's um, that there's only something there for the advanced rules so in the basic rules if you hit a heavy vehicle with armor piercing damage it doesn't have a resistance to it however in the advanced rules if you hit a heavy vehicle in its front arc so you know if this uh, German Sturmpanzer was fi firing on this Sherman here, hitting him in the front arc. Um, because heavy vehicles are more heavily armored in the front, that um, Sherman would actually get one defense roll against that. So any any hit um, coming from its frontal arc here. So even if this uh, Sturmpanzer was firing here because that's in its front firing arc, then that counts as being hitting its front armor and it would get one defense roll. However, if he was firing from here or for the back, from the back, then he does not, and it's uh, armor-piercing attack, he would not get a defense roll. Another rule in the advanced, uh, another new item in the advanced rules is smoke. There may be a commander ability or something that allows you to place smoke, so you'll place one of these smoke status die in um, the hex with a unit then that unit can only be seen or fired upon by units in an adjacent hex. So, for instance, this Oswind uh, Flak Panzer here would not be able to see or fire upon uh, that mortar unit because the smoke would... Now, if they were adjacent to them, they would. And it's also the same firing out of the smoke. You can only see or fire on um, units that are adjacent to your hex. And if a unit is, happens to be pinned and they get smoke placed um, in their hex, then they that obscures the, the pin and they are, are unpinned at that point. Smoke also blocks line of sight. So if this smoke was in this hex, you know, this uh, vehicle here would not have line of sight um, past the smoke. Just it would block it just like a building, but smoke only lasts one round. At the end of the round, um, I'm assuming in the status phase, the smoke um, status die goes away. All right, another change in the advanced rules is uh, buildings can be damaged. So you'll see the building. I mean, if you don't have the train pack, you would just put this uh, damage dice on the 
hex, but if you have the train pack, there's a little spot to put it there. And buildings can be damaged by um, HE attacks and fire attacks. So if a unit was attacking um, this uh, unit here in this building and they were hit with a HE or a fire attack, even if they rolled defense and they managed to avoid that attack, the building still will take the damage that was inflicted. So if one HE and one fire attack were hit against this building or hit against these units in this building, even if they, like I said, even if they roll their defense dice and they manage to block that, the building would still take two points of damage. So you would just lower this status down to a two. Now, if a building is ever destroyed, the unit inside the building is immediately uh, destroyed. And in fact, you can even uh, attack a building if it has nobody in it. Uh, again, they, they can only be damaged with HE or fire attacks and they roll no defense. So if for some reason you just wanted a building out of the way, even if there wasn't a unit in it, you know, you could attack it with HE or fire and uh, end up damaged. When a building is destroyed, um, you just remove it and put an orange um, cube in there and then that uh, space is an impassable space. If you have, there's a terrain pack, which I don't have, but if you have the terrain pack with damaged buildings, then you would place the regular building with the damaged building. And I think the last thing to talk about in the advanced rules is the battlefield defenses. So any unit that has the uh, repair icon, like the rifleman for the US or the grenadiers for the Germans, uh, any unit ha that has that for 2 CP during the maneuver phase, they can build a battlefield defense. So one thing they can build is sandbags, and those are directional. So they would choose which side of the hex that they're in that they want to build on. Again, that costs 2 CP. And sandbags provide um, heavy cover like a building, so you'd get two defense dice from an attack coming across the sandbags. Now, if this ost wind was attacking from where the sandbags from behind the sandbags, then there's no no defense. Although for you know in the future for another two CP you could spend uh, you know and then build some sandbags over on this side. So you can build multiple sandbags around your hex. Um, and all these battlefield emplacements uh, or defenses have two purple health, so the sandbags would have two purple health. So um, whenever the unit is attacked inside that hex, they get to roll their defense, and the, uh, um, the defense, like the sandbags, would get to roll defense as long as it was an anti-infantry attack, if it was... Uh, armor piercing HG or fire attack then of course they would no get no defense um, so they can take up to two damage and then that um, battlefield emplacement would be destroyed and if any vehicle were to move into that hex it would destroy all the sandbags you know without even an attack if a vehicle moves into the hex, the hex where there are sandbags all the sandbags are immediately destroyed Okay, another battlefield defense that can be uh, built for 2CP is a tank trap. And you would only, you only need one per hex, and that just prevents any vehicle from moving into that hex. And again, it has two purple health, so yeah, if a unit in that hex is attacked, then both the unit and the uh, defense could be uh, attacked. Or, and would get to roll, you know, possible defense separately. Or if uh, there wasn't a unit in here and, uh, you know, the opponent wanted to just attack that um, tank trap, they could do that. Again, it has two purple health, so only rolls resistance against anti-infantry. Any other type of attack, there's no defense to roll for that. And the last thing 
for 2CP you can build razor wire in a hex. And if you build razor wire in a hex that uh, prevents any infantry, friendly or unfriendly, from moving into the hex. Now, the, if a unit is in the hex that built it, they can move out of the hex, but they could then not move back into that hex. So as long as a razor wire is in a hex, neither side can move into it. The unit that built it, of course, could be in it, but if they move out, they can't move back in. And again, two purple health, or if a vehicle uh, moves into that space, it automatically destroys the razor wire. I think that pretty much uh, covers all of the advanced rules that, uh, anyway, that come with uh, what I got, the uh, four-player core set and the um, Terrain Pack 1, some of the other, uh, I think the Elite Commander's Pack or something like that have some other uh, rules, but I don't have that, so I think that's all I can cover. Um, I don't think I'll, I'll go through any sample turns. I think my previous video shows how the game plays, and then this video showed the differences uh, and talked about the differences with the advanced rules. There is a couple of other things I'll mention. As a feature of Terrain Pack 1, and you can use this with the basic rules or the advanced rules, you can slide out um, the back of these buildings, leaving a hollow, and then you can, let's see if I can get down here where we can actually see, when you're moving a unit, um, you can move, and a unit's going to move into a building, you can just slide it into the building like that, and so basically it's a fog of war, and you're kind of hoping your opponent forgot you have a unit in there, and it can remain hidden in there until an enemy unit has sight to the building. Then once an enemy unit has sight to the building, then you must take the unit out and put it on top. Now again, this unit couldn't go in a building because it's a mortar, but I guess I should have grabbed this rifleman squad. But uh, that's kind of a fog of war effect you can have with these buildings. And another possible option you have is to have double squad, two squads in the building. Uh, again, just pretend this isn't a mortar squad. Um, you could have one squad on top, one squad in the bottom and have double the firepower coming out of that building. They both have the get the two defense rolls. However, the drawback is if the building is destroyed, you lose both units, or um, when an a enemy unit attacks the building, um, the attack goes against all units in the building, so it, it would go against, their attack would go against the squad on top and underneath. And once a a uh, enemy has sight to the building, you know, you have to show them what's on, what you have underneath um, and they can see what's on top. Those are both kind of alternate rules you can use if you have Terrain Pack 1. Oh, some other alternate. The game comes with two timers, so you can, after your team has taken their turn during the maneuver phase, you can turn over your timer and then the other team... Uh, has until the time runs out. I think they said it's three minutes to take their turn. And uh, again, then once their turn's over, then you flip over the timer and you have that long to take your turn. So that's only, I guess, if things are taking too long, your opponents are taking too long, and you say, hey, we're going to use the timers. Um, if you don't have the terrain pack for, uh, you know, these 3D uh, sandbags and tank traps and so forth there's a, the game the core game comes with these cardboard tokens you know that's the sandbags tank traps and there's similar one for the razor wire and there are a few of these vehicle trays um, kind of like the infantry trays to put your vehicle on and their status dice and so forth but I don't know, I didn't use them in either one of my plays, it just seemed uh, it's kind of harder, I guess you put the CP in like that, I don't know, it just seemed a little more difficult, but I guess if you start getting several status dice and, and damage cubes and whatnot, 
uh, then maybe it's easier to use these. But there's only a few of them included. I think maybe six or something. Well, I think that's it. That wraps up my coverage of the advanced rules. I think I went over in my basic rules. I went over the commander cards and experience. Um, so I don't think I need to go over that again. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. And I hope uh, you enjoyed it.